Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R920 memory upgrades and how to properly load the system. For starters, the Dell PowerEdge R920 is a 4U server, which is used for a ton of robust applications. Uh, specifically, I see people using it a lot for large virtualization pro uh, projects or really anything that's data intensive, could be AI, could be anything of that kind of nature. Um, it's an awesome machine, really, if, even if you want to use it for simple file servers, you, you can use it for pretty much whatever you want, um, which is one of the things that's really nice. It, it's really robust. Uh, there's four CPUs inside. Uh, it utilizes Intel E7-2800, 4800 or 8800 v2 processors uh, obviously the higher you go the better it's going to be we recommend using at least a minimum of the 4800 series um, if not going all the way up to the 8800 uh, v2 series just because if you're going to be using uh, this machine and again you're using it for a uh, data intensive type of application you want to have the best proc inside um, as far as ram is concerned uh, there's two types of ram that the uh, r920 will take you can use ecc registered memory which will take up to uh, two terabytes total via 64 modules at uh, 32 gigabytes. With, and you can go as fast as um, uh, 1866 megahertz if you're using the ECC wrench. However, if you wanna use load reduce, which is the other type of memory that you can use, also known as LRDIM, the load reduce modules, you can go all the way up to six terabytes because there's actually a total of 96 DIMM slots in this machine. And with LRDIMs, you can fill it completely up and go all the way up to 64 gigabytes per uh, DIMM. So basically you'd put in 96, 64 gigs at uh, uh, 1600 megahertz. You'd have to go a little bit slower speed, but it'll, you'll make up for it with the overall uh, increasing capacity from the, uh, the DIMMs as a whole. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up. I want to show you a couple of different things inside here as far as how you load it. It's a lot different than your normal, uh, normal machine. There's actually eight memory risers that are inside. You have to pull out the risers and fill up each individual one. So I kind of want to demonstrate how you actually do it um, and, and how the process goes. So first things first, make sure that you're wearing ESD gear before you ever open up the machine. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll start and we'll show you how to open this bad boy up. Well, now that we've discussed a little bit about the memory, let's actually open it up and show you how to actually configure it and load it, um, pull out the risers and just how everything actually uh, works in this machine. So first things first, you need to open uh, the top this sometimes can be confusing for people. Uh, it's really actually pretty simple. Just make sure it's set to unlock. There's, you know, a lock and an unlock and people will forget about that sometimes. So a you know, regular Phillips head will just pop it to the unlock and just lift it open, unlatch it and pop it off. It's really easy. Um, once you get into the machine, um, as we kind of discussed, it takes, uh, you know, Intel procs, there's four procs. So each of the procs controls two of the memory risers. So there's two memory risers per proc, and it's pretty simple. Proc one does memory riser A and B, proc two does memory riser C and D and so forth, okay? So if you were to only have, because some machines will come with only four uh, risers, which personally I would always recommend to, if you're gonna use this kind of machine, that's a, you know, such a awesome machine, fill it up. Otherwise just use a 620 or 720 uh, for that matter. Now we're actually gonna go ahead and uh, physically pull one of these memory risers out uh, and show you how to actually load uh, the memory. And this part can be a, a little bit difficult, but it's not too hard. Um, it just sometimes the, you have to just make sure that you're pushing the right buttons because it can get a little bit stuck and you have to apply a little bit more force than you'd like. So I like to demonstrate it for people so they realize that, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Uh, so first things first, you're gonna take the, uh, the blue tab and you're gonna slide it forward. When you do it, this is gonna pop out. You're gonna lift this up. You kinda have to, like I said, pull a little bit hard. Um, then when it comes out, you're going to see uh, the memory riser. It you know, just slides in and out real easy. Um, you'll notice there are two little tabs right here. And when you open the tab you're now in, you can physically see all the dims. I'll show you. There's 12 slots. Um, you'll notice like a lot of the Dell machines in general, uh, white is the start of the channel. So you'll notice it goes white, black, green, white, black, green, meaning there's three dims per channel. This is actually really important to note because uh, we, had, we had said earlier, if you're using ECC registered, you can max out at two terabytes via 64 gig, or I'm sorry, via 64 modules, 64 times 32. There are no 64 gig ECC registered in case you were wondering. There's only 64 gig LRDIM in DDR3 world. DDR4, that's different. Uh, but you will notice there are three DIMMs per channel. While this is important, we've talked about some of our other videos. If you haven't seen them, the rank rule. Uh, the rank rule simply states that per memory channel, so for these three slots, 
you can only have eight ranks, okay? So why this is important is if you're using 32 gig DDR3 memory, all 32 gig DDR3 ECC registered are quad ranked. Dual ranked 32 gig DDR3 does not exist, okay? So if you're using a 16 gig or an eight gig, those are dual rank. You could fill the whole bad boy up. That's awesome, that's great. But what we're talking about here as far as is maximizing it and putting the most RAM possible. And if you're using 32 gigs, you can only put them in the first two slots. So they'd be in the white black slot. You'd skip the green, white black, skip the green, white black, skip the green, so on and so forth, okay? Um, with load reduced, however, uh, it's a better technology, and what it does is it allows you to break the rank rule so you can load in uh, literally all slots, um, and even 64 gigs or eight ranks just doesn't even matter. You can load the whole thing all the way up, um, and you can put in 1264 gigs uh, per riser, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. And again, we keep talking about how this is such a robust machine. If, if you're going to have a machine like this, in my opinion, uh, you, you should max it out. You, you should put the, the extra RAM in because you're using an intense application and the RAM is really what's going to help you get that extra oomph that you need to get where you're going. So um, now I'm going to show you how to actually physically take them out. Uh, right now, it's literally only got four 16 gigs. Um, and we're going to be loading it with 64 gigs for this specific customer that we're building for. Uh, they want six terabytes altogether for their configuration. Um, you'll notice, though, and I want to point this out, that we have in here uh, these black blanks. These are simply just little plastic inserts. They cost a buck or two. Uh, they're, they're fairly cheap. I always recommend uh, for data centers that, you know, if you've got a ton of servers laying around, uh, a ton of Dell servers, ton of, you know, HP, whatever, get some of these blanks. Um, they're, they're super cheap and honestly, it, it can save you some money and headache for that matter down the line because this riser costs 100, 150 bucks somewhere in that range to get a used spare one. If you have this riser go out because one of these dim slots has an ESD uh, shock to it, um, all of a sudden your whole riser is, is useless. You're facing downtime, you're facing all these other issues all over uh, you know, a dollar, two dollar part. Uh, to me, I would personally just recommend investing in some of that kind of stuff. I have it laying around and just fill up your machines with them that have the blank slots just to just to take care of it. Super side note, now we'll get to the actual important stuff. So um, as far as actually uh, opening the module, uh, it, it, it's just like anything else. All right, you're gonna push the tab down. Okay, I'm, I always put my hand on top because I don't want it to pop out and push the other tab down over here and you'll see it's loose now where I can physically actually remove the module. Okay, so now I have the module taken out um, and I'm gonna go through and do one by one and take out the blanks as well. I'll try to be quick because I know everybody's time is valuable. So I'll probably just do these first six slots over here so that we don't waste too much time here. Okay, so we got these all removed. Normally I'd be putting them directly into trays because you wanna make sure that you're always protecting your parts. But for sake of time, I'm just laying them on the ESD table. Okay, so we're gonna open up some 64 gig RAM. Actually, I'm gonna keep down. So we're gonna open up some 64 gig RAM. Uh, the 64 gigs are shielded, which is pretty cool because uh, they do uh, tend to heat up. So the shield will help uh, dissipate the heat. So actually, let me note one other thing. You'll notice on here, there's a notch, okay? Um, this notch is important. It's also known as a key. Uh, this key, it's real simple. It will prevent users from making errors. For instance, if you were trying to put in a DDR4 module, it physically wouldn't fit. If you were trying to put a DDR2 module, it physically wouldn't fit. If you're using a desktop or you know a laptop, a laptop would be really small, but if you're using any other module, they physically would not fit, and this key helps you. But you also need to make sure when you're loading it, uh, I have seen people who flip it around and they jam it in there and then they you know, end up damaging the module. So you just need to make sure that it's lined up properly and it literally just clicks in and you'll even hear the little click as it goes in and make sure that the tabs go perfectly in on each side and you just load this bad boy up. So I'll do a couple of them real quick just to show you how easy it is. And that's the nice thing about RAM to be quite honest is that you can load up, you know, a riser in you know, probably four to five minutes, knock out this whole machine pretty quick and you're getting such a huge boost in performance for you know minimal effort. Uh, personally, I, I'm a 
big fan of that. I always recommend to people one of the things that they should do is upgrade their RAM if they're, you know, even if it's a desktop, if your desktop's slow, if your server's slow, if you're not able to, to manage the applications at the speed you want. A lot of people are thinking about the processor, but to be honest, the processor is kind of always ahead of everything else. Uh, Intel is uh, reigns king as far as I'm concerned for manufacturers, so everybody's always playing catch up to them. So really, I feel like when you increase your uh, RAM capacity is when you're really getting a boost in performance. Didn't put that one in very good. Okay, get that seated correctly. And boom, just like that, we're loaded up. Now, I would normally load the whole thing, but I'm just gonna show you for simplicity's sake um, how to actually put this back in. This part, I do feel like you kind of have to manhandle a little bit. I hate to say it like that. It's such a terrible terminology when it comes to technology, uh, but it just, I don't feel like it always slides in very smooth. And sometimes people are worried they're jamming the riser in. You do have to be careful because it's easy to flip it around the wrong way. Just make sure, you know, uh, it says airflow, it tells you the direction. So for instance, I need to flip this around. Um, you, there's a little notch right here. You're just going to line it up and it slides in, but you'll notice it starts to give it right around as it gets there. It, it gets kind of stuck a little bit. It's always like that. It's not you know just this machine. Okay, I'm going to have a little push, nothing crazy. I'll kind of push it in and then you start to uh, push the, the bar down. When right here, it just gets real tight. So I just noticed that like when you get right here, you have to really push it down. Um, one of the things I also recommend is sometimes people, when they do that, they jam it down and this little blue clip can break right here. So you need to be careful. So personally, I recommend to slide it up just a little bit as you're doing that. It'll go in a little bit easier then let it go. And now it's really in, it's inserted in. Um, if you just jam it straight down, it could easily break that clip. And then that clip is actually needed to, uh, to hold the bar in, um, and, and just keep the whole riser in place. Otherwise you can't put the lid on and now I got a whole bunch of issue over the little plastic plate piece. So one of the things I say, just to be careful when you're putting them in, uh, just notice again, it's just a simple, just like that. Okay. So now it, it's partially loaded. I'm going to go through and actually load the whole thing for the customer here in a second, but uh, you can see it's really simple. It's, it's really not that hard. Um, once you're familiar with the machine and, and how to actually open and operate the machine, you, you can, you know, load this bad boy up for, you know, pretty simple, maybe 30 minutes of time if you wanted to go through all the uh, the risers and, and had it completely loaded and had to replace everything. Otherwise, I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a real simple uh, process that's not, not going to take a lot of time, uh, but it will increase your overall performance for a, a number of different applications for relatively cheap. So um, if you're interested, if you um, are, are wanting to upgrade your machine right now, if you need some 32 gigs or some 64 gigs, we actually just got in. Uh, it's about 1,000, uh, 64 gig, um, 1,600 megahertz, so the top of the line that you could put into this machine. Um, we just got a bunch of them in and we're running some specials at uh, roughly 120 a dim. Um, so you could fill this up for, for relatively cheap and really just boost boost it up to its top potential, which is of course what you want for a machine like this. So um, anyhow, we'll go ahead and close her up and I'll show you that part. And then uh, we will go ahead and sign off for the day. So I'm just gonna put the lid back on. Close her up. Voila, we're done. So if you have any questions or like I said, any upgrades, please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And our team of ninjas would love to help you out. Thanks for your time and appreciate you stopping by. Have a good one.